You got the call. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Hey everyone, welcome back to the call-up presented by Triple Play Fantasy. This is episode 16 of our weekly prospect analysis of every farm system and who's next for the call-up. I'm your host this week, Michael Richards. You can find me on Twitter at MPRichards1981. Uh, my partner in crime, D. Mendy, is off this week on a well-deserved vacation, but we're holding down the fort. This is actually my first time in the hosting seat, so I have a newfound respect for the people who make this look easy. But I'm grateful for the man on your screen who was kind enough to step in on short notice so we can keep the train rolling. Uh, without further ado, let's bring in the guest. He is, he covers the Florida Complex League for Utah Street South. Utah is spelled E-U-T-A-W. He has an <laughs> Orioles-focused pod by the same name. He's the co-host of a pod called the Florida Prospect Report with Bailey Serebnik, who we were fortunate to have on the show a few weeks ago. Uh, when possible, he works with 2080 Scouting to cover and film amateur baseball tournaments. And he also consults on players and their development with Fusion Sports Agency. All of this while attending approximately 20 minor league games a year. This man is up to date on players, especially in Florida. Please welcome Eric Garfield to the show. How's it going, man? It is going great. Thank you for the opportunity to be on a show that I love and listen to every week. And uh, also thank you for the opportunity to tell your listeners about uh, a few new names that I'm privileged to see and know about. Nice. We're glad to have you here. So I, I went over your bio there a little bit, but for the listeners who aren't familiar with your work, you know, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and maybe walk us through a typical baseball day for you? All right. Uh, very briefly, a couple of years ago, I got into a, uh, a bike accident. Uh, a lot of things changed for me. Um, I have a lot more free time and a lot more opportunity to see baseball up close and personally. So like a typical day, the rookie league games are at noon, so I would go to an Orioles game at Sarasota or in Bradenton. I live in that, you know, in between the two towns and uh, see a lot, film a lot, get a lot of information, talk to the players, uh, hopefully cheer for the Orioles to win. That's only happened seven times this year, but that's the day. And then the night I live very close to the Bradenton Marauders Stadium. So I go to uh, a lot of their games, a chance to to see them, to see the Florida State League and a lot of other teams and a lot of other good players. So uh, I don't really have to rely on a lot of other people for live looks on on players. So that really means a lot to me. Yeah, absolutely. You get a lot of great video on players and uh, especially down in Florida. So uh, keep doing what you're doing there. Uh, so let's just get right into it uh, with the first segment of the show it's the MLB or minor league players of the week uh we take a hitter and a pitcher that have been performing over the last week to 10 days and uh discuss what we're thinking about them so the first player on the list is Eric's uh we have Junior Caminero third base shortstop for the Tampa Bay Rays and he's been cruising the last 10 days and he's had a great year so far uh what what makes Junior Caminero on your radar and uh why should dynasty players be looking at him? Well, he's an outstanding uh, four category hitter, or he's, he's showing the ability to, to be that in his league among his peers right now. Uh, he's listed on the website 5'11, 185. He's a little taller and a little bit heavier than that. Uh, great, great, very aesthetically pleasing swing from the right side, which is kind of looks like a lefty type swing. <laughs> from the right side. So I, I, I liked what I've seen of him in person, but there's one amazing thing that he did that no one else has done to this point in Ed Smith Stadium where the Orioles have their uh, complex and their spring training games. I've seen generations of power hitters, Chris Davis and Mark Trumbo types, you know, from, from the early 2000s to, 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 to now, and no one has ever hit the ball 
all the way out of the stadium into the parking lot. And Caminero not only did that, but he turned on a pitch that was probably between 85 and 88 miles an hour. He just hit it absolutely perfectly and it left the stadium. So uh, I like his skill. I like his ability, but his feats of strength obviously caught my eyes and uh, made me focus in on his profile a little bit more. I mean, he's, he's had a great year, but he's really had an outstanding July. He went uh, two for four today and there's only, he's an everyday player and there's only three games in the entire month that he doesn't have a hit. So he's, he's red hot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Junior Caminero is a player I've liked for a while going back to the D Dominican summer stuff last year and, he was on the list I did. I did an article a few weeks ago for Fan Tracks, uh, highlighted about 25 complex league standouts, and he was definitely in that upper tier of players. So this is definitely someone you should be targeting in deeper dynasty leagues. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of this kid. He doesn't have the speed that some other guys that we like for fantasy, but those four category monsters bring a lot of value too. So uh, keep an eye on this kid as he moves through the system. Uh, up next we have. Alexander Canaro, outfielder for the Chicago Cubs. Over the last 10 days, you can see there he's hitting 478, 647 with a 1,174 slugging. I like that power speed, the four home runs and three steals. Yep. Uh, over, over for the season, between high A and double A, he's hitting 259, 341, 558. Um, I really like those 24 home runs and 11 stolen bases there. The 10.8% walk rate is great. I am a little concerned about that 28% K rate. The 143 WRC plus suggests how he's been he's been able to play through it and be productive despite having that. And I will, I'm going to pull him up a little bit here. Uh, I, let's see, I have, um, sorry about this. Oh, new computer. Um so when he moved up to double A, he's actually reduced his strikeout rate. I was a little concerned about him because in 2021, he kind of had a big, big drop off from his previous seasons. And he was a prospect that I liked coming into last year and he really struggled. And I was seeing the signs of that starting again this year and with a 39% strikeout rate in high A. But when he got the promotion to double A, he's reduced it down to 25% and he's hit 17 home runs and eight steals at the level. So this is a guy who's still just 22 years old up in the upper levels. Now he was a big part of that trade uh, for with Caleb Killian and yep. the Chris Bryant deal. So the organization's high on him. So uh, keep an eye on him. Definitely. Uh, if, if you're into guys with big power, the hit tools, the concern, but this is a guy that's been hot and has some pedigree behind him. So um, next up for our pitcher, we have, Dax Fulton, a left-handed pitcher for the Miami Marlins. Over the last 10 days, he's been good. Uh, the the season stats are a little high, but uh, what do you like about Dax Fulton? Oh, man. Well, first, I like his left-handedness, and he's a guy that I pay attention to because I'm, I'm interested in what the Marlins are doing as far as, like, having a good system that is really pitching heavy. It's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum from the Orioles. They have a good system that's really uh, offense heavy. And uh, I also like to see what happens when young players have the Tommy John and every recovery is somewhat unique, but uh, there's up, ups and downs worth tracking in the recovery. And I guess for like people who look at this or, or profiles from a medical angle, Fulton is doing as well as you can post-procedure He's been, I don't want to say, he's been consistently inconsistent, but never really bad. And right now, he's in a, a very uh, warm or a very hot period. So uh, he's just someone that I pay attention to. The agency that I work for, it's uh, run by Brad Penny, who was also a former tall Oklahoma pitcher. So Fulton is a tall Oklahoma pitcher. He's lefty where Penny was righty. So... There's a lot of reasons that, I, you know, he's a guy that I'm, I'm lock, locked on to and pay attention to. I, 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 from the dynasty angle, I think it's not like a buy low opportunity. But if you know who Dax Fulton is, 
you already would have made an investment in him. And I, I think that's probably smart. Absolutely. Uh, Fulton, someone I've liked since he got drafted a little bit. Uh, I will throw in that four, five, six ERA and one, four, two whip is a little misleading. His, his 30% strikeout rate, 8% walks and the 3.03 FIP is nearly a run and a half lower than his ERA. So he's been better than his numbers suggest. So in that sense, if someone is just looking at the surface numbers, there may actually be a buy low opportunity. Good point. Uh, yeah. So um, the pitcher for me, I'm going to talk about next is a uh, first timer on the show, Quinn Priester, right-handed pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Over the last 10 days, 11.1 innings pitch, five hits, zero earned runs, three walks, and 11 Ks. So he's been in the zone here. He's pitched in high A, low A, and double A, but the first two stops in A ball were kind of just getting him ramped up. Uh, since he's moved up to double A, he has, let's see, uh, a, one five, a one six five ERA, and he's been very effective. He's still only 21 years old. Uh, from a from a scouting perspective, he's got a double plus curveball, which is his money pitch, and a plus cutter. It's like a slider cutter. the The reason that people are a little, if, how do I put this? There's a group of like scouting people that really love this kid. Yep, me too. And and, and then the the numbers don't scream top prospect compared to the other guys with the 25 percent strikeout rate yep. and stuff like that. So. I'm, I'm just saying, th I think that this kid's better than some people think, and I don't think we've seen his full potential yet. Do, uh, do you have something you want to throw in on him? No, I'm, to I'm totally agreeing with you. This guy, he has more pitchability than stuff and more guile than than maybe arm action or ball in the air action, but he's, he's elite in that area, so I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, he's not a guy that anyone's – that pays attention to dynasty doesn't know about, but uh, he's like I said, he, he might be kind of a controversial player. Like some people like him, some people don't. So if you can find someone who doesn't like him, I, I still think he's a good target for his age and level. And uh, you know, he's, he's going to be a big part of P Pittsburgh's future. So uh, definitely keep an eye on him. Uh, next segment we're going to look at is our prospect watch. Uh, we're just talking about players at any level that have caught our eye that we want to uh, kind of highlight. And the first player I'm excited to hear about from you is another Pittsburgh pirate. We got Bubba Chandler, right-handed pitcher slash DH. So he's a, he get, plays on both sides of the ball. He's a 19 year old complex ball and a ball this year. So uh, tell me, and you actually sent me a video of him uh, yesterday when we were prepping for the show and said, Hey, look behind the, look behind the home plate. And it was you sitting there watching him pitch. So, uh, let's hear about Bubba Chandler. Wow. Uh, well, Priester and Bubba back to back really kind of, you know, if, if the first one doesn't get you, the second one's definitely going to get you. Um, he started out in the rookie leagues and he was their Saturday starter. So when you, it, it, they played the Orioles every Saturday, cause that's just how the schedule is arranged. So six of his seven rookie league appearances were against the Orioles and he was completely dominant there were some games where it was three innings zero base runners and seven or eight strikeouts so he really made his name beating up on the team that I love and care about so much and he forced me to respect him he's got everything he has a cutter he has 98 an easy 98 when he needs it and can use it as a finishing pitch or an out pitch he has a tight breaking slider and he has a true 12 to 6 curveball he's got a beautiful throwing motion and outstanding delivery you know he was a college quarterback recruit at clemson so uh i've yet to actually see him hit despite seeing him so many times um he's moved up to bradenton so he's in low a now and he's he's completely dominant he's had uh Eight games and 20 innings total, so he's or 21 innings total, so he's not really uh, a long multiple times through the lineup guy. But his whip is 1.1, his ERA is two, and he's got 40 strikeouts in the 20 innings. So he's doing the same thing at low A that he did in the uh, in the rookie leagues, and um, I think that he is outstanding. And when all is considered. 
it's possible that he might be the Pirates best draft pick in in the year he was drafted and he might be the overall best pick he's he's a very solid hitter they use him at dh on the days that he's not pitching so he can contribute to the team in more than one way you know he he's kind of like a minor league otani he's a good hitter who also happens to be an ace so i'm excited about him i feel lucky to see him but pirates fans should really 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 be extremely optimistic on the next few years for bubba Absolutely. And anyone who's kind of followed me or for a while, I'm, I'm big into like unicorn type players, just players who can do rare things. And a, a player who's a teenager who's in full season ball, capable of pitching and hitting, that is the definition of a unicorn. So let me put you on the spot here a little bit since you've seen him. Do you What do you think his long-term role is going to be? Do you think he remains a two-way player even up through the majors? Or do you think they kind of let him play on each side and then let him go with the one that he's best at? Wow. That is a great question. I would say in most organizations, they might not be equipped to let him attempt to do both. I think I know right now the pirates, at least for his early minors, part of his development are committed to letting him do both for me and how I've watched baseball and like what I know the unwritten rules and how it is. It's very hard for me to think that if he ends up as a true ace, that they're also going to let him hit and contribute that way if he's a true number one. But I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, I like to see people that can do things that other people can't do. And it would, it would, as a fan and a supporter, it would please me a lot if he was uh, given the opportunity to, to do both. I, I might, I might err more conservative. And if he starts to show that he's a true ace, I might put the bat away, but that's, that's just my personal take. Absolutely. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on Bubba Chandler. If you're not aware of him yet, uh, he might still be someone who's kind of under the radar in some uh, leagues where people aren't as deep into prospects. So uh, get him on your team soon. If you can, Uh, the guy I want to talk about next is someone that I brought up early in the season and it's Evan Carter outfielder for Texas over the last 10 days. He's been on fire there. 522, 571, 1,130 slugging, nine runs, four homers, seven RBIs, and a steal. The main reason I want to talk about him is the fact that I don't think he gets as much credit as he should for being a 19-year-old in high A and being productive. Uh, When I look at his overall skill set here, we're talking about a guy with a potentially plus hit tool and plus speed who's getting into power He's, he's built kind of like a Josh Lowe type guy. So he's going to get into power down the road. So we're potentially talking about a, a well-rounded guy, maybe even like a 2020 type guy with a good, a really high OBP. And I like his 15.4% strikeout rate. I mean, he's supposed to be overmatched right now at this level. And if, if you put all those things together, the scouting grades, the stats, the, the age and level, I just think if a player like this would be talked about more ranked higher thought about as an elite prospect. And I don't think we're quite there yet. So I still see a buying opportunity in fantasy for this guy. And and I think this is going to be a guy you're going to want to have on your teams down the road for his well-rounded production. I agree. I, I, I like him. He's definitely not available in my dynasty league, but I think he's very good and going to be even significantly better as he develops. Absolutely. Uh, so let's jump right into our final segment here. Uh, it is who's next for the call up. And we have an, basically an Orioles expert, one of my go-tos for sure. When I think about the Orioles. So I had to get at least one Oriole on here. And the guy you want to talk about here today is Kyle Stowers outfielder for the Orioles, 24 year old in AAA. Uh, why don't you tell me what you know about this young man? Well, uh, I've watched him closely for years. I film him at uh, minor league spring training and the uh, exhibition season. And I kind of think there's going to be similarities with his upper stages of his development and Orioles shortstop prospect Gunnar Henderson. They're both lefty and they've had issues to get past with facing lefties, especially ones that 
use movement more than heat. However, the power is kind. The power that he's demonstrating is kind of covering up for those uh, little areas of deficiency. And you know, he's he's mashing. He's a, he's a true power hitter at AAA in an organization that's probably inclined to trade outfield assets. So that makes me think that he's you know he is he's already appeared in the majors this year that he's more than straddling the line. He's kind of just about over it, and maybe uh, outfielder Anthony Santown there has to be moved pre-deadline for Sowers to get that final uh, call-up and stay there. Uh, but I love what he can do uh, pull side. He has a very violent swing. He's not he's not going to maximize swing decisions. He's gonna he's gonna swing away, so he might not be a high average or hit per at bat guy, but uh, offensively. He's stellar, and defensively, I would categorize him as elite. I watch him go for fly balls like a wide receiver uh, setting up a defensive back to catch a, a long pass. So he really has great body control, outstanding feet, a good and very accurate arm. So I know defense doesn't really mean a lot or really anything towards fantasy, but it means that he's going to be in the lineup often and not taken out for a defensive replacement. So uh, good skills, good power, and opportunity right in front of him kind of makes me think that, like I said, he, he's above that line. And I, I, when I look at him, I don't consider him a minor leaguer. I see a major league player in Kyle Stowers. Absolutely. That's exactly what I was about to say. I, I think he's proven he's above the minor leagues at this point. Uh, I mean, the 278 ISO, I mean, that's some legitimate power. 130 WRC plus. He's well above average there. So he doesn't strike out too much. He's got a good OBP, good slugging. Uh, this is definitely a guy in the upper levels that I think doesn't cost a lot in fantasy. I don't think he's really hyped. He's not really viewed as a big time prospect, but these are the type of guys that you can plug into your team oh, yes. in deeper leagues and get some good production out of, you know, so definitely keep your eye on Kyle Stowers, maybe even as a secondary trade piece, you know, just kind of sneak him into a deal if you can. Um, so the last player we're going to talk about here today is G1 Bay. I made sure to look up how to pronounce that. And he's a second base shortstop outfielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates. This has actually been a pretty deep Pittsburgh uh, show we've done accidentally, but he just turned 23 and he's up in AAA. This is someone I've wanted to talk about for a little while. He he doesn't get nearly as much credit as he should. And I think it's solely because of his relative complete lack of power. I mean, game power, he's not he's supposed to be well below average. And he's actually tapped into a little bit that this year. Uh, but we're talking about a guy with a double plus hit tool, plus speed or better, who has great contact rates. And he's a middle infielder in the upper levels who's basically been 22 years old all year. And he's just not put on lists with top prospects. Uh, I, I know there's a, a debate going on about like proximity versus upside with, with people, but this is a guy who's nearly the same age as other elite prospects coming up through AAA and, and, and putting up relatively similar numbers. I mean, the power is not there as some of these other guys, but every other aspect of his game is there. I think this guy's going to be a high batting average guy. I think he's going to be a stolen base threat. I think he's going to be possibly batting at the top of the order for them down the road. And this is an organization who's building up a lot of young talent. So there's a lot of opportunities there to score runs and lots of good fantasy value here. So this is someone that I think you should target pretty aggressively right now, particularly for his proximity. I th And I think in on base leagues, maybe even a little more strangely, we could have substituted the name taken out Bay and everything you said, except for the specific stats, said uh, Tucupi Tucupita Marcano. They're very similar. They play the same positions, kind of more contact than than pop. So it's weird that he's got like a very similar comp on a, on a like exactly similar developmental track. I know I, I, I'm friends with pirate people that work for the Pirates and they really, really, really like Bay. And, and they, they also see him as a leadoff, top-of-the-order type guy when all is said and done. Nice. Well, uh, that's great. I, I guess we got through this one. 
Uh, so I want to thank thank you again, Eric, for joining me this week. Anytime. Uh, I always enjoy talking baseball with you. Uh, yeah. Before we take off, can you tell the people, you know, where they can follow you on social media and maybe what you're working on? Sure. Uh, I guess the next I, uh, I'm I'm Eric underscore Birdland on Twitter. And I think I'm Eric underscore Birdland 22 on Instagram. That's where I put the highlights uh, on the story so you can see it. Uh, the next article that I have coming out, I'm going to do a couple profiles on the rookie league coaches because they're new to the organization and they're great educators. So uh, that'll be soon. But until then, I'm going to cover the rookie league games. Uh, a bonus for any of you listening, it's Thursday night. Tomorrow is Friday. The Orioles have a star prospect on a rehab assignment. So I'll be watching Kobe Mayo play. And if you would like to uh, come, you can watch him Watch him also. So I'll be I'll be watching a lot of baseball uh, until the season ends. Thanks for asking. And also thanks for calling me an Orioles expert. <laughs> nice. Absolutely. You've helped me early and often with the Orioles. Uh, you were one of the first people who cued me in on Gunnar Henderson when he was young. So you'll always have my respect in that in that area. Um, so that wraps us up for week 16 of the call up. You know, D Mendy will be back next week and I can promise you, you won't want to miss that show. We've got a great guest for Eric Garfield. I'm Michael Richards, and we'll catch you for week 17 of the call-up.